Brian Slagle from Metal Blade Records came up today to uh, give the guys their uh, copies of our uh, nice little box set that we did here, which includes a Metallica track, uh, Hit the Lights. The, if you guys have been reading on the website, I'm sure you know the background, but it's the original version that was only on vinyl. came out in 1982, and uh, the subsequent versions had the No Life to Leather demo version. And this is the first one, just let James and Lars and their friend Lloyd Grant playing guitar on it. So uh, it's cool those guys would let, uh, let us put it on. There's a nice little interview with Lars in there as well. So I wanted to uh, fly up from L.A. and actually hand deliver them their stuff and kind of say hi and check it out. So let's go back 20 years here and uh, tell us a little bit about when you met these guys for the first time, what happened. Well, I met Lars, uh, a friend of mine named John Cornerens. Him and I were the only two people in L.A. in 1981 that knew anything about the new wave of British heavy metal. So we both went to see Michael Shanker uh, play at the Country Club, uh, which is this club in Los Angeles. And afterwards, John saw some kid in the parking lot wearing a Saxon European t-shirt. And at that point, nobody in L.A. knew who Saxon was, let alone had a European t-shirt of him. So John ran up and said, like, hey, you know, where'd you get that shirt? And it, it was Lars, and he said, I just moved over here from Denmark and stuff. And he's like, oh, you got to come meet my friend Brian. So I think the next day or a couple days later, Lars came out of my house and we were, you know, he had a bunch of records that we didn't have and uh, we had records he didn't have. So we just uh, kind of ha started hanging out and running out to record stores and stuff to find the latest new wave of British heavy metal thing. Uh, and then a little bit of time after that, I decided to put together a local uh, a compilation album of local L.A. metal bands that ended up being Metal Masker. And Lars called me up and said, hey, if I put the band together, can I be on your compilation album? I said, Sure. And that ended up uh, being Metallica. Cool. So what was your first impression here of the, the little Danish guy? Well, it, obviously it was great to, to meet somebody else that knew something about the whole thing that was going on in Europe. Because, like I said, my friend John and I were the only two people in L.A. that knew anything about that scene. So it was great to meet him because we had this connection of both really being into this music and being diehard into it. And, you know, he knew so much, so much about what was going on there because he was actually, even though it wasn't in England, he was obviously in, in Denmark. So he was close to it. So it was fun hanging around with him. Uh, one of the, a couple stories that I always tell is that uh, we would drive around to record stores and uh, probably two hours away and we'd stop the car and Lars would be out of the car and in the record store before we even got out of the out of the car which was a problem because there were probably only one or two singles in there so we go running in hey he's gonna get all the singles and uh, also I remember we were over to his house one time and uh, he had a drum set in the corner that wasn't even put together yet he said I'm gonna start a band we're like yeah sure you are Lars so but he uh, I guess he had the last laugh on that one so he was a good guy and then uh, You know, I, I hadn't met James until after they had actually recorded the original song, and uh, you know, he was obviously a good guy too. And I think I saw their second show that they ever played, the one where they were opening for Saxon at the Whiskey, where James didn't even play guitar; he just sang. So, but uh, they're good guys, you know, uh, good guys, and they're still good guys today. So it's uh, it's been 20 years for all of us, which is pretty unbelievable. So you're a big part of Metallica history there, I mean, putting them out for the first time. Did you could you ever see where they would uh, where they are today? <laughs> well, I don't think any of us back then thought that anything was going to happen really big. I mean, just to have a record out and just to be part of that whole scene, I don't think any of us thought it was going to be that big. But as time went on, you know, when when I first heard the No Life to Leather demo, that's when I was like, "Whoa, this is something, you know, really special." And then uh we did a Metal Masker show up in San Francisco and we they brought them up and you know, in LA when they played, they were awesome. But the L.A. crowd was kind of, at that point, kind of getting more into the Motley Crue rat, more uh, pop metal sort of thing. So they didn't quite fit in. And uh, when they played in San Francisco, it was like instant. Like the fans there loved them. And it was, you could almost see them being like, oh, this is, these are our, this is our audience. And that was another little click where you go like, oh, boy, this is really going to start to happen. So uh, you could see it in the early days once they started to play around L.A. and stuff. It was awesome. And, of course, you know, they've gone to do pretty well, I think. Still around? Yeah, they're still around. Cool. Anything else you want to uh, tell us? I mean, how does it feel being here today and, you know, follow them from day one? Uh, any? Oh, it's fun, you know. I mean, they're, they're good guys, and, you know, it's, it's cool that we've all remained friends over all these years, and we've both, you know, had some success in the music business. And, you know, they're still the same guys. Honestly, they're still the same guys that they were 20 years ago. They really haven't changed a whole lot other than... The fact that they have nicer studios and things like that, so it's a, it's always a lot of fun to come up and see them. It's a, it's a good time.
So uh, you heard some of the new stuff. How do you compare it to Hit the Lights? <laughs> a little more mature, maybe. But the new stuff is awesome. I, I was really impressed. I, I like uh, the stuff they're doing, and I think everybody up there is going to be pretty happy, too. It's metal. Do you got anything fun going on? Let's say uh, I'm in L.A. on Wednesday. Yeah, if you're there on Wednesday, December 4th, you're going to see a whole bunch of metal bands. It's our 20th anniversary show at the Palace in Hollywood, California. And uh, we have, let's see, Cannibal Corpse, Armored Saint, Engine, Lizzie Borden, Vehemence, and Cattle Decapitation. They're all going to be there, and there's all sorts of assorted guests and other crazy things that may be going on. So, fun time. If you guys are in L.A., you should come check it out. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.